What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back with another video. Uh, I've been trying to get a long whiteboard for the past two years now, so we finally got it. Uh, this one's going to be about the fake Jesus of the world, which many people follow unknowingly. Uh, majority of people follow that, that Christ, what I'm going to talk about, which is really Satan in disguise, Antichrist, a deceiver. Okay, remember, Paul speaks in the book of Corinthians that um, there's going to be people who come to preach another Christ, another Jesus. Okay, I remember I posted this in my community section and people were saying, no, Mark, there's no such thing as another Jesus. You know, obviously there's only one true son of God, but there's, you know, Satan always has to send up a little counterfeit. And a lot of people are following the false Christ, which I'm going to be exposing in this video. Okay, so we had the false Jesus and then we had the real Jesus, Yeshua, the way, the truth, and the life, the real Jesus of the scriptures. Okay, so let's, get it, let's break it down, man, because a lot of people are following the ways of this world and they have no idea, and it's religion that's deceiving them. Okay, I'm going to explain it a little bit. Let's go, let's go. Let's start off with the fake Jesus, okay, the Antichrist, 666. Remember, when the Antichrist comes, he's not going to, he's going to bring Christianity and all the other religions together. It's not just going to be um, Muslim, Islam, Mormon, it's going to be every religion, okay, every, the new age, all going to come together, okay. That's what he's going to do, all right? It's really Satanism in disguise, all right? So first one up is the fake Jesus, the false Jesus, the Antichrist that a lot of people are following today, guys, all right? Teach us to follow religion, you know, Christianity, paganism, traditions of man, and lawlessness, okay? What do we see today in these churches? When I used to go to church, uh, my churches, the churches I went to, the pastors I went to, uh, I went to most, I will say over 95% of churches here in America celebrate Halloween, celebrate Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all pagan holidays. They all refuse to speak on this because it's a big business, okay? That, you know, that's usually on Easter, usually on Christmas, mostly Easter. That's like the biggest day where the church eats. They get a lot of money because, you know, people who are of the world who follow the false Christ, they think it's, you know, let's go to church once a year uh, or a couple times a year, usually on the pagan holidays, and let's, let's you know, give praise to Christ. And I already have multiple videos exposing how Easter is a pagan holiday, has nothing to do with Christ, bunnies don't lay eggs, but that's for a different video. Uh, so that's what, they, that's what the false Christ teaches you. And also these false pastors and preachers and uh, prophets still practicing and teaching paganism, the traditions of man. They refuse to talk about God's commandments and teach on God's commandments, but they're gonna push traditions of man and lawlessness, okay? And the real Christ, the, you, the real Yeshua, okay, teaches you to become set apart, to come out from among them. Come out from among the deceivers. Come out from among the liars and the false go uh, gospel, the, uh, the false doctrines, okay? And to keep Yah's commandments, okay? To repent or perish, okay? And it's a relationship with the Most High. It's a relationship with God and not worldly man-made religions. I promise you guys, the minute you become set apart, the minute you leave these, the, all religion, okay? Christ never said in the Bible once, follow religion, okay? It says to follow Him. So I promise you guys 100%, the minute you leave religion, I'm, I have living testimony to this. The minute you leave the church and you actually follow the Bible, you're going to be hated. You're going to be hated by your pastor, the people that you fellowship with, they're going to feel some type of way. It's a spirit. The spirit of truth is not in you. You're seeking truth, you know, and you're actually living, you're actually following it. You know, you don't want to celebrate the pagan holidays. You want to, you know, you don't want to partake in worldly things, you know, or, you know, things that are the traditions of man. They're going to have an issue with you, okay? When you actually follow the Bible and do what it says, they're going to have, they had an issue with Christ. So, of course, they're going to have an issue with you because you're not better than him. Okay, so the minute you become set apart, I'm telling you guys, the spirits are going to get rattled up. The demons, the religious spirit, they're going to have an issue with it. Just like the Pharisees, uh, the scribes, religious spirits, they had an issue with Christ. It's a spirit. Okay, when you have the spirit and truth in you, it's like these religious spirits, they, ha they have a problem with you. Okay, this is all religion. Okay, religious spirits. So, it teaches you to become set apart. Always keep this in mind, man. Be and for those who don't know, being set apart means to be holy. Okay? To keep the, um, God's commandments, to repent or perish, okay? The false Christ teaches you to live a lawless life, which I'm going to be talking about later on in this video, okay? The traditions of man teaches you to follow uh, religion, okay? So next one up is promotes peace, okay? This is what, one thing that I thought when I was going to church. When I, and see, there's a reason why people follow this, the false uh, Christ, is because they don't read the Bible for themselves. They don't study to show themselves to approve. They rely on a pastor. They rely on a church to feed them the word. And there's nothing wrong with that because I know that God has shepherds to, you know, to feed the flock. But the thing is, when you're not doing the work yourself, when you're not actually reading the Bible for yourself, 
and study to show yourself approved, I mean, in the word and actually applying it to your life, you're not going to grow spiritually and you're going to be easily deceived by the deceivers and you're not going to grow. And it, I mean, if you've been following, guys, if you've been following the Bible for five, 10 years and you see no real spiritual growth, you're not, you're not out here planting seeds in people and, and, you know, saving people through your, you know, through, you know, leading by example through your life. Okay, people are not coming to Christ because literally because of your spirit, then that's the issue. Five, ten years, because if you're following this one, guarantee you're going to be saving souls. Guaranteed. You're following this one, people are just going to stay lukewarm. You know, people are just going to stay of the world. You know, you're not, you're not going to set an example. But if you follow this one, you're going to set an example. But always keep this in mind. They're going to hate you too. They're going to hate you real hard. Your family, okay, your friends, your loved ones, you know, people at your job. They're going to have an issue with you, man. Remember, a spiritual warfare. We're not dealing with flesh and blood. All right, so the false Christ promotes peace. He comes to bring peace. He comes, when he comes, he's going to give you a hug and a kiss. You know, you see those pictures on the internet. He gives, <laughs> he gives you a hug and a kiss. That's not how he's going to come back. The real Christ, the real Yeshua, okay, came to bring division. Okay, he came to separate the fake from the real, to separate the tares, children of the devil, and, and to separate them from the real, the children of God, man. So Christ came to bring division. Okay, in these last days, guys, a lot of you guys who are set apart, who are following this Christ, Okay, you, you're finding yourself, God's removing certain people out of your life. He's removing your friend that you know for, for years. Uh, family members feeling some type of way. Uh, maybe your loved ones, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you know, God forbid, your wife, your husband, your children, feeling some type of way. Okay, and this is all what, what, what happens when you truly follow the Messiah, the true Messiah, the Messiah. You lose people. Okay, a lot of people, they're not willing to lose people because they have the love of the world in them, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. Okay, this will be a long video. I'm going to try to make it quick, though. I'm going to try to make it quick. But yeah, so always keep this in mind, man. If you're on this walk, if you're following the true Messiah, have you lost people? Do, do, do people get bothered sometimes? But do demons get bothered by you being in their presence? You got to ask yourself these type of questions, man. Because if everybody loves you, everybody gets along with you, you know, and, you, and you claim to be following Christ, that's, that's what Christ is. It has to be the fake one. Okay? And this is, like I said, they don't really teach us this, man. You're going to have to be hated. When you deny yourself and bury your cross, you're going to be hated, man. So always keep this in mind. Christ did not come to bring peace. He didn't come to give you hugs and kisses, man. He came to bring division, separate the fake from the real. You know, the wheats and the tares. Christ talked about this in the parable in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, okay? So always keep this in mind. The tares, that look identical to the wheat. And it's very hard to discern, you know, between the two. But in the last days, and it says that, let them grow together. So some of you all might be friends with, with these tares. Might be, God forbid, might be in your family. Or you might be in a relationship, you know, sleeping next to the enemy. You know, so you always want to have the sermon, have your eyes open and hearken to the Holy Spirit. Hearken to the word. Yeah. All right. Next one up is, oh, this, this is actually supposed to be tied to this one. Wants to bring the world together in a false worship, anti-biblical. Okay. So, you know, wanted to bring the world together, wanted to bring peace. This is what they teach us. This is what, you know, in, in a lot of these churches, all these pastors, now, I'm not saying all of them, but this is what I was taught when I was younger by family, friends, stuff like that. Wants to bring people together, wants to bring peace. It's a feel good message. It's feel good, you know, and the false worship. You know, Christ talked about this in John chapter four, verse 22 to 24, is that people don't even know what they worship. Okay, People don't even know what, you know, what they're worshiping. They don't even know that they're, they're worshiping the false Christ, the false Messiah. Okay, and it's anti-biblical. All right, so always make sure that the worship, that the fellowship you're having with certain individuals is biblical. It aligns with scripture. Okay, so the next one up is, this is another thing too, and a lot of believers too are cowards. Remember the Bible says the cow cowardly will be thrown in the lake of fire. Okay, so hates to offend. That's why the, the fake Jesus is loved. Tickle ears. A lot of people I've noticed, guys, they're afraid to speak the truth because they're cowards. They're afraid they, because they know that it, what it comes with. They know that it comes with people unfollowing them on social media, on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, TikTok. Okay, and they know that it comes with burdens. It comes with, you know, being alone because they're cowards. They're afraid to speak up. God is not, God is not dealing with the cowards. It makes it clear in the Bible, the cowardly, the cowardly be thrown in the lake of fire. Okay, so the false Christ hates to offend, has to t tickle ears, has to tell you everything you want to hear. Guys, if you're listening to a sermon, you're listening to a preacher or you're at a church and every time you go there, you're not getting convicted. You're not, your spirit's not getting rattled. Okay, that's a red flag. Now, I'm not saying you have to get your spirit rattled all the time you get there, or you get convicted all the time you get there, but when you go to a church building, when you go to fellowship, you should leave with, with some new information, new wisdom, with you know, a renewal of your mind, a renewal of your spirit. 
Okay, you shouldn't just be leaving, leaving the church, leaving the building, and you're, you're right back to uh, getting drunk, smoking weed, and there's no conviction. You're not trying to fight your sin off. That's an that's a issue, and that's what, what was happening to me. And many people today, when they go into these churches, they're not being taught real truth. Okay, fleecing the flock for money, for clout, or whatever ill intentions they have. So remember, discernment, you have to be able to discern these spirits. Okay, there's a lot of wolf and sheep clothing. Okay, false prophets out here. So hates to offend, that's why the false Jesus is loved. It's, easy, it's an easy message to accept. But the real Christ, the real Jesus, okay, offends the world and religious spirits. Remember, he was offending the Pharisees. The Pharisees and the scribes, they taught the Bible. They knew the Bible for what it was. Okay? But they had a religious spirit. They had no love. It was all about clout. It was all about ill intentions, wanting to be liked by other people. That's a lot of people today. They were, they were cowards too. So offends the world and religious spirits with truth. His sword cuts deep. Okay, we all know the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the word of God is sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. Christ, when he was coming with people, he was coming with the word. He was coming with that sword, the sword of the spirit. He was, he was fired up with the armor of God, man. He wasn't playing no games. And I am, in this video, I'm not playing no games either, man. He was not here to tickle people's ears, to tell them everything they need to uh, want to hear. Nah, man, he was convicting people with the truth. He was telling people, if you don't repent, you're going to perish. Okay, he was, telling, he was telling people, you know, in, act, in the Bible, if you actually read it, he talked about repentance more than he talked about love. Yeah, you could go look it up. He talked about repentance, getting people to turn away from their sins, getting people to keep God's commandments, you know, more than he taught about love. But you see, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that if you don't read the Bible for yourself, you know. So I recommend people, guys, to actually be reading the Bible at least once, one hour a day. You know, that's what I would recommend. You guys really want to grow? You guys want to stop playing church? Because I promise you guys, I promise you guys, down the line, I'm living proof of this. Five years, you're going you're gonna to thank yourself that you, that you took that year, you took that season to really get to know him, to really follow the truth. To stop playing church, stop being lukewarm, get deliverance from a religious spirit, stop playing religion. Okay, come out from among the people of the world and become truly set apart. Yes, you're going to lose people, people are going to unfollow you, you know, um, you know, because one thing about this world is that people... Especially when it comes to relationships, they like people when they're broken. They like people when they're damaged. They like people when they're in darkness. Once you start to draw into the light, people have an issue with you. Like I said, your spirit, the Holy Spirit in you, the Ruach, it bothers their demons. They have an issue with you now. Like I said, it could be your own family. Remember, the Bible says that your enemies will be in your own household. So don't be surprised if it's your own, your own brother, sister, mother, father. You know, God forbid, but don't be surprised when that happens. Okay, so the real Yeshua always always offending the world with the truth and also christ said this too he says blessed are those who are not offended okay christ said that blessed are those who are not offended because christ knew that when he was coming with the word it's going to offend people it's going to bother people it's going to riddle their spirits and a lot of people were offended by that okay and so if it says that blessed are those who are not offend offended so what happens to those who are offended what's the opposite of bless curse so when someone's giving you that word man Sure, you might be getting convicted. You might want to stop away, but it's love at the end of the day, because like I said earlier, you know, it takes a lot to speak the truth in this world that we live in today, this evil world we live in. Okay, it takes a lot for it, you know, so always, always show love to you see the brother or the sister who's actually, you know, departing from all evil and wickedness and speak, standing up and speaking of the truth. That's not being a coward, because that's the reason why the world is the way it is today, guys. A lot of people are cowards. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid. Because they know what it comes with. I'm not afraid, man. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. You want to be bold. Okay, this is how you also get to grow in the faith, too. Your, 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 your faith, is gonna, when you really, really set apart, it's going to produce works. And it, it won't even feel like works because it's just your faith. Your faith is growing and growing. That little small mustard seed eventually grew into a big old tree. Okay? So next one up is the false Christ says, live however you please. Because once saved, always saved. Your faith doesn't have to produce works. The false Christ says, once saved, always saved. You don't have to repent. You don't have to keep God's commandments. Okay, now, of course, we're saved by faith through great. Uh, we're not saved by our works. But when you have true faith, it produces works. Okay, now, we're not here to boast of, you know, your works. Not, we're not doing all that because people like to twist what I'm saying. But what I'm actually trying to say is, you got to live a life of repentance. You got to be obedient to the Most High. Yes, you're going to fall short. Yes, sometimes you're going to make mistakes. This is a part of our growth. This is a part of our walk. Okay, true, but true repentance is, you know, the intention is to not do something again. You have to love God. When you really love God, guys, it's easy to depart from sin. It's easy to depart from evil. 
It's easy. I'm telling you guys, when you really have, when you really have the heart that seeks after God, it's easy. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to be perfect, okay, as in like you're never going to sin again. But the Father, uh, but Christ makes it clear to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Everybody, the world tells you no one's perfect, which, you know, no one, everyone falls short. Everyone, you know, sins. We all know that. But Christ has to strive for perfection. Be, father, uh, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, okay? They don't teach you that, man. This is the harsh truth. So, you, you know, so always keep this in mind that once saved, always saved is not biblical at all. Don't be deceived out here. I understand that people want to live in sin. They want to be lukewarm. They want to be carnal. Okay, a carnal mind is death, you know, because it's, it's, it's hard to do this. It's hard, it's hard to actually deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow him. That's hard to do. If that was easy, everybody would do it. But clearly it's not. So people like to play, you know, play church, you know, listen to a couple videos, go to church on Sundays, and then the whole Monday through Sunday, just living in sin, living for the world, and thinking God is pleased with them. Woefully, uh, woefully sinning. Okay, so next one up is the real Christ, the real Yeshua, commands you to not deny yourself daily, to bear your cross, and to sacrifice for Yah's will and the gospel's sake. So you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to, you know, forsake the world, forsake the things of this world. You're going to have to be, be willing to be hated, bearing your cross. You're going to have to be suffering the flesh for righteousness sake. You're suffering for righteousness sake. This is what the walk is all about, man. But like I said, guys, if you're following the false Christ, the Antichrist, 666, okay, you, you, you feel comfortable in your sins. You know, you, you, you misuse scripture, you take uh, verses out of context, and all you're doing is stagnating your growth, stagnating your spiritual growth, being separated from God. When you, you know, twist uh, scriptures to fix your own sinful desires, that's dangerous, okay? So you don't want to be doing that. Next one up is... The false Christ the world promotes, which is Caesar Borgia, is white-skinned, long, feminine hair, and that some, some people claim for him to be Middle Eastern, okay? The Bible makes it clear how Christ looked like. People will say, well, Mark, it doesn't matter what skin color he was. If it didn't matter, why would God say in the Bible how he described him how he looked like? So clearly it does matter. When people say it doesn't matter, it's because they want to stay in the delusion. They don't want their, their program, their false programming to be triggered and to be attacked because it's the truth, the truth attacks. So if the Bible makes it clear to how, uh, describe them how he looked like, clearly it matters, no excuses, okay? So also I put long feminine, feminine hair because some people will be like, well, Mark, you have long hair. You have, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, verse 14. Well, I have locks. Solomon had locks. Um, what's, it, well, uh, what's his name? Samson. He had locks, long locks. And what, was it a shame for them to have locks? No. It's talking about the long female type of hair. You guys know. And I, yeah, the false Christ, they, have a, they gave him a feminine look. It's all brainwash. Okay, if it didn't matter what his skin color was, why would, why would there be an agenda to always make him look a certain way? Feminine, sweet, soft. No, nah, Christ was masculine. He was a masculine man. He, he was a, Christ was a man that wasn't living in lust. So I know he was strong, strong in the spirit. Okay, next one, or so the actual Christ was dark skin. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Okay, and, and he had hair like wool. Okay, scriptures that support this are right here. Song of Solomon um, talked about how Solomon had locks. Okay, uh, Jeremiah talks about how Judah was black, black into the ground. Okay, so Christ came from the tribe of Judah. All right, next one is the false Christ tells you to serve your own will speaks only on love okay so that's what the false christ does tells you to do your own will it's only about love love feel good but the real christ is hated and despised okay whenever you truly teach his word there comes a separation from many like this video guys is going to separate the weeds from the tares this video is going to trigger people all because i'm speaking truth many people are going to get offended by this message but the bible says blessed are those who are not offended a lot of people are going to get mad at this video. This is how you know you're getting convicted. Instead of getting mad at the messenger, why don't you look to see if my, everything I'm saying is backed with scripture? Why don't you ask God to see if this is true or false? And God will show you. You know, always pray about whatever I'm saying or the people you watch, whether it's at a church or YouTube or whatever the case is. Always pray and ask God, is this person of God? Okay, and pray that you don't be deceived. Pray that you have eyes to see, your eyes are open, that you have the Holy Spirit, which leads you to all truth. Okay, so next one up is hate on the true children of Israel. Never speak on the fake Israel, racist. I know it's about Christianity. People in Christianity, they refuse to speak on the false 
Israel, the fault, you know, I don't want to be labeled anti, shh, you know, what happened to Kanye, even though Kanye is played for another team, but they don't speak on the fake, the, the fake, ooh, I don't know if, I don't know if the algorithm will allow me to say that, you know, <laughs> Revelation chapter two, verse nine, uh, chapter three, verse nine, I'll leave the verses on the side. They don't speak on them and they, and they refuse to acknowledge who the true Israel is. The Bible makes it clear over and over. People are like, well, Mark, it doesn't matter who the children of Israel is. If it didn't matter, why is the children of Israel mentioned many times throughout the Old and New Testament? You know, but a lot of people, they hate on the children. The children of Israel are the most hated people on earth. Okay, look at the Egyptians. Look what happened, look what happened to the Egyptians. They hated, they hated on them, the Ro Ro Romans. All the nations hated on us. Okay, and this is all by design, all by design. Our right, next one is, so the real Christ, the real Yeshua, was sent for the children of Israel, never afraid to expose evil and wickedness. So the true Messiah, okay, he, he, he was sent for the children of Israel. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24 says, I am come sent forth for the children of Israel. Now, some people will say, well, Mark, can Gentiles be saved? You know, some people say some foolish questions like, Mark, can white people be saved? That's a, such a foolish question. Okay, salvation comes to all who believe, all, all who deny themselves and pick up their cross and follow him, whatever, whatever nation you are of. But it doesn't mean that the true children of Israel are, you know, so-called black people. It doesn't mean that's not, you know, we should just ignore that fact. Nah, because there's an agenda. Okay, the, 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 the Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 people, it's going to speak in code for the algorithm. Okay, I had a friend who, sp who spoke on the, the fake, those people out there, you know. But look up the, I'm speaking in code, I want to speak in code, okay? The, I know someone who spoke on them and he got banned on YouTube, so I'm going to be wise. Wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, just like the Bible says, okay? So I'm going to be smart. But you guys should know, I'll leave, these verses right here, look it up. I'll probably leave it on the screen somewhere, either here or somewhere, oh, somewhere on the screen, okay? So, yes, Christ was sent for the children of Israel and he was never afraid to expose, expose wickedness, to expose evil, even if that came with you know, him being betrayed. Our right, next one up is never say the, the false Christ, never say anything offensive and, or negative and accepts all people. OK, so the real Yahshua warns of the danger of sin, judgment and hellfire and teaches the consequences of sin. OK, so what the thing about the church does, they say that, oh, you're forgiven. Um, you'll receive salvation. God loves you. OK, and that's, that sounds good. And, you know, that's true. If we repent of our sins and we follow him. And we sin no more, just like he says, yes, we will receive salvation. But they, the churches and people who follow religion and the t ear tickling gospel, they don't teach people the dangers of sin and the consequences of it. Okay? Yes, you can repent, but whatever you sow to your flesh, you shall reap. Okay? If you're living a life of, of a warmonger or a harlot sleeping around with a whole bunch of people, you're going to have to reap the effects 10, 20 years from now. You're gonna be, it's going to be harder for you to pair bond with the man. Okay? As a man, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be you know, maybe catching the disease or something. So there's always consequences that come with sin that people refuse to talk about. So this is real. This is what happens. Okay. So always understand that, yes, you could be forgiven if you repent, but there's always consequences for your actions, for your sins. Okay. Even if it's, even if you do repent from it, there's still a consequence. So people got to talk about this. And this, this, this teaching should get people the fear of God in them to think twice before they open up a door. To think twice before they commit a willful sin. Because you know that the consequences last forever. Okay, many people in the Bible, you know, David, David committed adultery. The, and he had to deal with that consequence for his whole, his whole life. The Bible made it clear that that sin will never be forgotten. Now, he was, he was forgiven. Obviously, he was forgiven, an anointed man, but that was never forgotten. So always understand that there's always consequences for your sins. You got to be accountable. Be accountable for your actions, okay? And truly repent. Truly cry out to God and ask God, you know, you know, to, to heal you internally, whether there's a soul tie or whatever spirit or, or stronghold that you may be struggling with, cry out to the Father, man. Humble yourself. Get on your knees. Don't even look to the sky. Look to the ground, man. Okay, so next one. Next one is the laws and commandments are done away with. Okay, that's what the false Christ teaches. That's what people and, you know, people who follow that, that God talks about. Okay, the Bible makes it clear that Christ, he practiced and kept uh, the Most High's laws and he kept the commandments. Christ says that if you teach others and you practice the commandments yourself, you'll be called great in the kingdom of heaven. 
But if you tell other people not to keep the commandments and you don't keep it for yourself, you'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 19. It even says, think that not that I came to destroy the law. Christ didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill. Okay, so the laws and commandments are still, are still here. They're not done away with, but that's what religion teaches you. Religion teaches you to live however you want. Live a lawless life and it's all good. It's all good in the hood, but that's not the case at all. Okay, last one is, Love the world, the false Christ is love the world as long as you have good intentions. You know how they always say, oh, as long as you have good intentions, it's all good. But the pathway to hell is paid with good intentions. Don't be deceived. Don't trust in your heart. Don't follow your heart. Follow the Most High. Follow His Word. Okay? Follow, and, and lean on the Holy Spirit. Lean on His voice. Okay? The real Christ talks about leave the world behind. Yes, that's biblical. You know that, that Netflix movie that came out? That's, this is biblical. Leave the world behind. Hate the world. And must love Christ more than anything else. The Bible says that if you love not, if you love your father, mother, sister, daughter, brother, son, wife more than Christ, you're not worthy of Him. So Christ demands respect. Christ demands you to love Him more than anybody else or anything on this earth. Okay? How many people can say that they love Christ more than anything on this earth? Let me know in the comments below, man. This is it. This is the false Christ versus the true Christ. If you guys made this far, please like the video. Share this out in the algorithm. Okay, many people need to see this because they are unawarely following the false Christ. All right, I also have a video titled uh, The Hebrew God versus the Christianity God. I made it about maybe two, three months ago. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave it somewhere on the end screen. Click on it, watch it. Make sure you guys watch it. A lot of gems in that video too as well. I love you guys so much. Share this video if you haven't already. I'm out. Peace. God bless you all.